Should I call for room service now or something? Sure, to call for them. Well, when do you think you'll be ready if I do? I'm, I'm finished, man. Finished? <laughs> you must be going to San Francisco. That's the worst hate ashbury suitcase I ever saw. Listen, man, just go and pack your own clothes, because I'm ready. Hey, don't get salty with me, man. We're going to San Francisco. It's going to be wonderful. You remember in San Francisco what happened in 1906? No, what happened in 1906, they had an earthquake there that knocked everybody to their knees, but it's nothing to what's going to happen when we get there. Yeah. Yes, I know a lady there, ma'am. Name is Sally. Her, she carries a parrot on her shoulder. We're going to go over and... Is that right? Now, listen, Russ. There'll be no more assignments. We just finished one, and we're going to San Francisco because we got a date with Good a parrot. Good evening, gentlemen. <sighs> yes, sir. You pack a very neat bag. Say hello to my friend, Bad News. Russ! Hey. Come on, Russ, that's not funny, man. It took me almost 45 minutes to pack that bag. You won't need any clothes. Yeah, that sounds like a neat assignment. I gotta have some clothes when we're going to San Francisco. You have no place to go. You're under arrest. <laughs> As long as I've known him, he's always had a rotten sense of humor. How come we're under arrest? For that trick you played in those deputies up by the lake. Well, we learned that trick in spy school, Russ. But you're only supposed to play that trick on enemies, not on county cops. Obviously, Russ, you haven't had much to do with county cops recently. Anyhow, the point is, it was necessary. We were on an assignment. Those guys wouldn't let us perform the assignment, so we had to make up a decision whether it was uh, country comes first or the county. Oh, come on, don't try to snow me, Kelly. The sheriff has issued a warrant for your arrest, and I'm supposed to turn you over to him. Oh. That's silly, Russ. You know perfectly well you can beat that rap in a second with a phone call. Sure, all you have to do is call the Pentagon, have them call somebody up here to call somebody so that they can make that warranty just an old, old thing, just suitable for framing. Wait a minute, you know the department doesn't hatch your eggs for you? Any trouble you get into by yourself, you get out of by yourself. Unless, unless it was strictly, and I mean strictly in the line of duty. Well, it wasn't a line of duty. Now, let me explain to you. First of all, Kelly and I had to contact this guy named Smith. Now, all yeah. we knew is that Smith was in some way uh, connected with a man by the name of France. Mm -hmm. Now, France, of course, was a man who... <coughs> Smith was the head of a whole enemy apparatus here on the West Coast. Sorry. So what we did was... arranged for us on the lake with a man who had had some contact with Smith. Computer bite you? Mosquito. Listen, let's not kid ourselves. Certainly. There are no fish in this lake whatsoever. Oh, there probably was one once. By 1932, Zarber, I believe we have a nipple. Where? Lux 
strangers? Zero. You're late. I was in Vegas, gentlemen. Just got up to my cabin. Oh, which is which? I'm Robinson. He's Scott. Mr. Stokes, have you any idea how many days we've been waiting for you? Now, let's have it, and have it quick. What do you know about this guy, Smith? Easy does it. Voices carry. Well, what'd you pick such a dumb place to have a meeting for? Yes, I like lots of open air around. I like where I got room to run. Now, do we talk or don't we? Talk. About Smith. I don't know Smith. I don't want to know Smith. All I want is to get paid for knowing about him. Come me out of this spy stuff. Yeah, we understand your business is narcotics. Oh, let's lay it on the line. I was promised immunity for meeting you here. You've got it. Now let's hear the story. I was setting up connections in Mexico last winter. Met a little man with a beard. He paid me to take a couple of packages over the border. I found out he worked for a smith. And just a few weeks ago, I ran into the same man again. He was calling himself Dr. Franz. He was right there. Huh? There. A light flash. We're being watched. I'm getting out of here. Forget it. was killed. What happened was, we were close enough for me to get hit with the shock of the explosion, mainly in the ribs. What happened was, a real estate agent uh, type girl, species, very friendly. This time, no, we don't pull it off. No, not this time. We let it wear off. Oh. Just remember that. You said you were looking for worms. Worms, yes, sir. Yes, some worms uh, for fishing. Yes, for we going fishing. Yeah, the man was going to get us a whole bucket of them. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Sergeant, uh, my friend here is injured. Didn't I give all that to you in the report last night? I think you did. Well, I know I did. Now, uh, what about the, the boat, the explosion? Was it rigged? So far, it goes down as an accident. OK. No, I'm going to go downstairs and pay the bill. Oh, please, I wish you would. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mr. Scott. Yeah, listen. <clears throat> I'm going down to pay the bill. I'll be back up, all right? The longer he stays here, the higher the bill. Mr. Robinson. Yes, something sir. bothers me. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh, yeah, what's that? You're a pretty well-known tennis player, aren't you? Oh, well, yeah, I, uh, sort of. A cocktail circuit, you go where the mink coats are, black ties, it's like that, isn't it? Oh, <clears throat> yeah, whenever we can, sure. The people you come in contact don't usually have records, do they? Like, say, pushing heroin? Uh, no, not usually, no. The man who was killed did. Oh. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I guess you just never can tell about people, can you? I mean, why would you associate with a man like that? He, he, he's like, uh, I mean, it just happens up here, man. You get friendly walking down the road and everybody you meet has got fish hooks in his hat. And he says, hi, your neighbor, how about some worms? And, uh, and it's, and, and that's, you just suddenly become friends with people up here because it's, you're pitted against the elements in this subdivided wilderness. And I'm just the girl who does it. Does what, dear? Subdivides. I certainly hope so. Uh, this is a young lady from my favorite uh, real estate agency, and her name is... Sally. Hello, Sally. Timmy. Timmy. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Robinson. I think that'll do it. I hope so. I'll see you soon. Of course. Timmy. Hmm. Timmy's a nice man. Timmy's rotten. He, he gets out of line every time you come in the door. You never get out of line. Uh, well, that's, that's because you're always trying to sell me real estate or something. Not today. Today's martinis and a thermos. 
And only one martini apiece. The condition for your release. Mm. I, I wish I could, but I, I just, I can't go. Why not? You're sitting on my pants. I've never done that before. I'm flustered. Uh, uh, listen, uh, dear, where are these wonderful martinis at this very moment? In the car. Okay, uh, why don't you just nip off to the car and, and get the martini? Because outside it's all dusty and everything, and there's a lot of leaves around on the ground and everything, but in the air conditioning we have and the coolness and, and good air. And why don't you just bring them back up, lock the door just before my friend comes in? Get dressed. Harry. Yes, I will, sure. Better please. Harry? Ha ah, ha. Hi, how you doing? Yes, all right. Came, back, came right, oh. Came right back, didn't you? Nice lady. Wonderful lady. Yes. She's a marvelous and insidious child of the desert. Nice. Has a whole thermos of martinis down in the, uh -huh. down in the car. Martinis. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You want to tell me something, please, if you would be so kind? Mm -hmm. Now, when we, when we crash straight down in an airplane, who's sitting in the seat beside you? It's always me, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? When a car goes craning over the cliff and we fall down seven flights of stairs and all, I'm always beside you. I never fail you. I'm always right there. Yes. How come it is that I'm always the guy that gets the cracked face off and you come out no scratch, nothing perfect physical shape and condition. How about well, that? Well, you have to learn to relax, you see. I'll uh, try that some. And then somebody, then I guess it'll have to be you, will have to tighten up and get the job done a little bit. And then uh, maybe it'll be you who gets cracked on uh, rapes and instead of me. About, uh, about the girl. Yes, wonderful child. It says on our report, that you're just seeing her because she is the local real estate agent, you see, uh, who has rented us a cabin, and it helps your cover to be walking around looking at the territories and stuff. Is that right? Uh, come, come. Mr. President, make your point. Uh, my point, sir, is that uh, we are looking for a man <clears throat> by the name of Smith, uh, who at this uh, very point is the uh, heart of the enemy communications on the West Coast. That's the very, very truth that you said. Uh, then why are you going out on picking Nickies? It probably seems like a frivolous thing to you, doesn't it? Oh, yes, I do indeed. You saw that girl. She sat right here on my trousers and begged me with her eyes. Didn't it grab you in your heart? Oh, well, my lips quivered. Uh, however, uh, we are looking for a man named Smith. Yes, we are. You see, whose name I do not very much believe at the very time. Well, there was also a man named Franz who was mentioned, if you will recall. Well, somebody triggered the explosion. Smith, Franz, somebody. Somebody who knows we're after him. Well, they wouldn't have troubled themselves to destroy our entire cover and kill our only lead. And you're still going on a picky nicky. I'm a spy, my man. A spy. Truly bred for hard work yeah. and cleverness. Okay. So that when I'm on a, on a picnic, you see, drinking martinis up in the pine needles and everything, mm -hmm. that means actually I'm working. Mm -hmm. Yes. Behave yourself. to about 17 million uh, with a discount for cash. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I was drifting off a little bit. It just struck me uh, right down there is where we were yesterday when that explosion happened. Kelly, the nurse didn't say you could uh, go hiking. And as long as I'm not going to sell you anything, why don't we go down to that nice little beach near your cabin and I'll feed you. It's funny, though, you can see almost a whole lake from here. It's not a very nice view. Let's go. Star tracks. Somebody liked the view up here. Have a four-wheel drive. These kids can park anywhere nowadays. It took off in a hurry, too. See there? Well, maybe the uh, lady was difficult. Maybe. Wait a minute.
Yeah. Somebody definitely liked the view up here better than us. Past five years I've been operating this hotel, I've probably met a couple of dozen Smiths here. What, uh, what did he look like? Uh, well, I don't know what he looks like. Um, I just know the name. Smith. <laughs> you know, a name like that. Uh, try France. France? He's a doctor. What, uh, what kind of a doctor? Well, I, I don't know, man. I, I told a friend of mine that I was coming up here, and he gave me the, the names uh, of, of a couple of buddies. He said, look them up. Maybe they have a place up here. I wouldn't know about that, but if you're looking for some poker buddies, why don't you move into the hotel? Then as soon as the tennis courts are fixed, maybe Kelly can show the guests a little tennis. Mr. Delaney. Uh, Mrs. Stutman and her beef of the day. Oh, yeah? Good luck. Uh, what seems to be the problem, Mrs. Stutman? Waiter. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Just leave that bottle. Just leave that bottle. Ulcer? No. Uh, for some reason, if I don't get two quarts of it a day, I start to cry. You know, it could be the guy with the beard. Who? It was a professor or something. Has a place, oh, 10 or 15 miles up Sawmill Road. His name's Fritz or Franz, something like that. Comes in for a drink now and then. A little guy with a beard, right? Could be. Hey, boss, isn't that that guy's name, Franz? What guy? The little guy with the beard. The little guy, you know, the one that wanted us to stock that foreign beer, Franz. I wouldn't know. He never said what his name was. I'll take care of this system. Thank you. I figured like this. Mine host lied to me. If the waiter knew Franz, Delaney had to. So a phone call had to be made to Franz or Smith to warn him. Very good indeed. Uh, uh. Uh. Ribs? Huh? No, no, it's just a tape. It's pulling the height right off of me, really. Listen, I'm going to go up to the house and, and get us some ice. Hey, you want anything? Kelly. What? Hey, you're still hurting, aren't you? What? The no, the practical sister. Well, the tape is pulling my height off a little bit, that's all. That's ridiculous. I shouldn't have brought you up here. Will you stop that? I'm a very happy person that you brought me here. It's just that my ribs are not as happy as I am. Kelly, mm. will you tell me the truth about something? Probably. What are you really doing up here? You're not really interested in looking at real estate. Now, I've sold much too much property to be fooled. Okay, you caught me. See, what happened was, I'm on my vacation. Now, that part of it <clears throat> is true. I was walking down the street, and I just glanced off uh, into this window, and I was stunned by what I saw, and I went in the door, and there I was in your office, and, and there you were with your feet on a desk. <laughs> I never had my feet on a desk. No? I would have sworn it was on it, because I remember I was looking at your feet, or, or, or it was your ankles, or... I'll get the ice, and I'll build you a tall one. I'll bring it back, and you can sip it and right. admire my feet. I wish you would, my dear. Please. Ah, uh, hurry back now and bring your desk so I can remember you as you once were before. Lovely girl. Kind, considerate, worried about my ribs. You could tell all that by the way she walked to my cabin. Far. Girl was dead, 
girl that didn't know anything about spy rings or ferns or Smith or anything else. She was only dead because she happened to know me. Mm -hmm. And it still doesn't get you off the hook. Doesn't get you off the hook or get rid of those warrants for your arrest. Russ, I, I just, I just uh, folded that shirt. This shirt must have cost $15. As a matter of fact, you can't get a shirt like that for $15. On your salary, how do you do it? Well, you know, it's just... Russ, mm -hmm. do you... Well, now, look at this. It's silk. Yeah. How do you do it? Well, you know. No. I don't know. He's got a seamstress. She makes shirts and sends it to him from Hong Kong. See, some, some ladies are senders and, and, and some are receivers. She's a sender. You're a big mouth. Hey, Russ, we got to get out of here, man. You know, I've been listening and I've been listening and I still haven't heard why you played that trick in those jeopardies. Well, it happened right after that, right after the explosion. The place was in flames. I couldn't get to the girl. So I ran. I went up to the road, found a phone booth. I couldn't reach her. I, I couldn't get to her with no way. All right, now listen. Quit shouting and slow down, all right? I couldn't get her out of there. Now, where are you? That was for me. Do you dig that? That was for me. Just tell me where you are. I mean, I'm in a, a booth up on the road, so it's near the cab. I'm going to kill this guy. You got me? I heard you kill him. Now, who, who are you going to, who are you going to kill? The, Smith, whoever he is. He's around here. I'm, I'm going to find him, and I'm going to kill the guy. Now, will you listen? Just one minute. Will you listen? Yeah, what? All right, now, there's a lead. A man named France. What? Who? Where? He has a house. It's a one sawmill road. Now, I don't know exactly where. 10, 15 miles from the inn. Yeah, I don't care. I'll find it. I'll see you there. Hey, hold up. Is your name Kelly? Yeah. Is your cabin down there that's burning? Yeah. What are you doing up here? I'm phoning for help, man. Fire service saw the flames. Didn't you hear the fire wagon come up the road? Yeah, but I was phoning for an ambulance. There's a girl down there. The girl's dead. Come on, let's go. Wait, 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 wait. Go where? Sergeant Shaw wants to see you. What about? There's a dead girl, mister. He wants to talk to you. He, what, listen, tell him I'll be in touch with him. Now, right now, he's on his way here. You tell him for me that I've got Tell to... him nothing, mister. He wants me to hold you. Uh, what for? I didn't start the fire. Let's get in the car. I can't. I, there's stuff I've got to do. Which way do you want to get in the car, mister? Well, I guess I'll have to be with the cuffs, then. Fine. Let's have it. <laughs> going. Got some things to do. Well, there's something I want to ask you. It's about that tennis court we've surfaced. Uh, I'd like you to take a look at it. I'm in a hurry. You, uh, your, uh, your car's parked on the back lot, isn't it? And you have to walk right by the tennis court to get there, don't you? <laughs> Uh, Sawmill Road? Yeah, how about? interrupt this program for an all points bulletin. Police are searching for a man in whose cabin Sally Holmes was found dead after an explosion and fire. It is known the man was injured and his left hand in bandages. He is approximately six feet two of light complexion and is wearing a windbreaker and light colored slacks. His name, Kelly Robinson. He is wanted for questioning.
If you have information or have seen him, please contact Lieutenant Shaw at local police headquarters. We return you now to our regular scheduled program. Here we are. I'm in a hurry. Oh, now, how long will it take you to take a look? Boss? Hey, boss. I just heard something. That Sally Holmes, you know, in the real estate office? She was killed. I just heard it on the switchboard. So is she and she and Kelly? Yeah, it's out at your place, Scotty. Some kind of accident. They sent fire engines. Was Kelly all right over there? They didn't say anything about him. your car, isn't it? Yeah. My name's Scott. Sure. I've been looking for you. What for? Sergeant Shaw wants you for questioning. <laughs> Shaw said to me to do it any way I had to, so let's go. Swipe. Car came around the grade and went right over. Anybody get hurt? Yeah, the uh, truck driver says a guy came around the curve here about 70 miles an hour. Didn't make it. Anybody we know? Yeah, the little man that lives down Sawmill Road about 10, 15 miles. Dr. Franz? He's dead. front. Fold it three inches from the neckline. If the sleeve is parallel. Well, uh, whether it was Smith, you see, who, who died in the accident uh, that we were talking to you about, or whether it was Franz, mm -hmm. you see, we didn't know. We couldn't be sure whether indeed they were the same guy. We didn't know that either. Only thing we knew for sure was uh, uh, I was wanted for murder. So the two of you left those two poor gentlemen handcuffed. And they were deputies, handcuffed to themselves. Gee, you do it good. Do another one. So anyhow, now you know the whole scam, man. You know everything. So now you can just get on a telephone, call Washington, and get him to call off the warrant. You know, those uh, deputies got balled out pretty good. The sheriff told me about it. Oh, they'll love this at headquarters. They'll frame the report and hang it on the wall. When they start showing visitors around, they'll point to it and say, there's the report about the two deputies who got themselves handcuffed, both on the same day with their own cuffs. Well, I'm not going to send that report in. You want to know why? Because I'd have to sign it. And forever, my name would be linked with yours. And that's why that report isn't going to hang on the wall at headquarters. Well, it's getting dark, and it's the only lead we got. Get out on all points forward and on Robinson. Man answering his description was seen getting off the bus one mile north on 97, where Fran's car crashed. Now comb the woods and don't get lost. All right, move, both of you. Yes, sir. And try and hold on to your guns this time. Try and remember this is murder. I want Scott and Robinson for murder. Yes, sir. Me. 
hitched a ride looking for a Francis place on Sawmill Road. With a high of 65 and a low of 42, some cloudiness in the upper mountain area, but mostly sunshine for tomorrow. Police have reported recovery of a vehicle stolen from the Lakeview Inn today by one of the fugitives sought in connection with the death of Miss Sally Holmes. The vehicle was found abandoned near the outskirts of town by... K.R. What did you do to your arm? Uh, it's an explosion. All fields. Ah, that's right. What did you do in the oil field? I swamp her. Uh, listen, let me off here. I thought you wanted to go to Timber Flats. Uh, no, this, this is fine right here. Thank you. Okay, good luck. Thanks. My nose. Uh, yes, if you'll remove most of your fingers from my face. Oh. <coughs> my friend, the gunslinger. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, don't mention it. Hey, leave it off. Man. No, no, the bullet drapes. That's all right. Supposed to be in San Bernardino, Johnny. Yeah, I know that. That's where I sent the posse the other way, so you'd have a chance to shoot up the other people. Maybe this guy France was Smith, and he's dead, and the assignment is over. Yeah, I'm not gonna believe our assignment is over till I hear it officially. Yeah, well, listen, I tell you something. Now, this France was up to something, man, because somebody gave him a lead that I was chasing after him. And then he just started uh, burning little things here because the ashes here are fresh. Mm. On the other hand, uh, maybe Franz is not Smith at all. Franz is just some little guy that got scared and started to run too fast. 
Well, how about Delaney? Maybe Delaney Smith. Now, it's a sense that he's tied up in this thing, because he's the guy that told France that I was after him. Yeah. Murph? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I know. No, no, we're not. You... I know about the all points. Yes, we're... In the... But don't do anything about it. No, nothing. All right. Really? Me? No, I'm not surprised. Sure. Listen, Murph, you're a good man. Okay. Listen, you know that binocular case that you found? I had a department check on the sales of cases in the area. And uh, that's the only case that fit glasses that size that was sold recently. Would you like to hazard a guess as to who they belong to? Conversation about the late Dr. France. What the devil are you talking about? You don't want to talk about him, huh? I don't even know him. All right. Let's change the conversation then, and we'll talk about the case to your field glasses. Friend, you're, you're talking, but you're not saying a thing. It's a nice little place you have here. Nice place for cover. Of course, your cover's blown now, Mr. Smith. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, okay. Hey. You dial Dr. France, 337-16. Go ahead. You dialed him before. That's why he was hightailing it down the road. Go ahead. 337-16. Oh, one, six. Hello, Kel. Yeah. The ashes were great, man. Uh, obviously, Franz had to leave out of here in such a hurry, in a panic and all, that he didn't even wait for everything to burn. And upstairs in a bureau drawer, I found a whole bunch of letters in code, but I could make out names and places, real spy stuff. No question, we got this guy Smith nailed right here with the stuff. And not only that, but all the names of everybody in that network. This guy Delaney is in it up to his ears. Yeah. <clears throat> Has to be Smith. Who else would want to rest him dead the minute we got close to him? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to bring him over. Also, do me a favor and tell the boys in Los Angeles to get up here right away. And the technical guys to give them a hand with everything, okay? Yeah. Let's see. Now listen, I'm telling you, you got one more last chance to hang it on somebody else. Now, who killed Stokes and Sally? shot. I didn't know then. But whoever did it must have heard the phone call and knew that Kelly was a sitting duck up at Francis' place. I'm listening. It's bad luck.
now. Okay. Listen, don't don't worry about that. I think uh, you better scratch Delaney. Uh, somebody just took care of him, and it wasn't me. I think it was Mr. Smith, and he's coming your way. Right. Okay. It's about two minutes head start. I'll see you later. Right. Good evening. Welcome to the hotel. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Since when's the hotel using parking attendants? Well, since the hotel decided to make it more convenient for you, sir. yourself a good look. Mr. Smith, I presume. Who sells real estate by the lake shore. And kills people. And blows people up. And so forth. Who was the who was the girl in the cabin it blew up with? Nobody. A hitchhiker I picked up that morning. Shook me. I thought it was you. Surprise, surprise. Oh, aren't you happy that I'm alive, Cal? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, no. Uh, <clears throat> no, I'm not, because it seemed like everybody that's close to you winds up in little tiny pieces. Because, you know, uh, you're really no good, Mr. Smith. As a matter of fact, you're rotten to the core. You're a bad guy, and you kill people, and you're going to get yours. How can you talk like that? Well, you're a dead man, don't you know that, Kel? Go ahead and try. I don't have to, honey. Come on out, Scotty. Wait, hold it. Don't shoot. It's Sally.
fun, Cal. You make it exciting, though. How bad? Wonderful. Nice job, Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Oh, let's hear it, folks, for our big bad Alexander. Ah, uh, the woman, uh, the woman uh, made a fool out of us, sir. Oh, uh, sir, uh, she made a fool out of us. Hurt me, shot an arm off of my face. And uh, she's gonna shoot it out of her hand, all right? Thank you for everything you did for us today, the way you taught me how to fold these shirts. I never would have known if you hadn't showed me. And I really want you to know that I definitely appreciate it a lot. You got my hat in there. Huh? I beg your pardon. Right, now, you want to do something useful, please? Troublemaker. Mm hmm Sit on this thing. We still got a helicopter to catch. Right. OK, boys. OK. I'll take care of the county law. Did a pretty good job. All's well that ends well. Yeah, slide over a little bit, Oh, because... Well, it didn't end well. I'm listening. Over the other side. Sorry. Get the scissors out of your bag, man, because we'll never... All right, this. all right, gentlemen. What happened then? How come it didn't end well? Well, <sighs> Kelly and I decided to do a little fishing, you see. I was fishing down at your end of the boat. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I thought you got a little nibble there about uh, an hour ago or so. Shh. Disturbing the fish, man. Yeah. Put any bait on the hook? No, I mean, it's, uh, I hate to take unfair advantage. Hey, listen. Huh? Um, would you like to change sides? Oh, Is fine, yeah, okay. Yeah, we have to change size. This is better now. Now I know you're going to catch some now. Listen, what kind of bait are you using anyway? Worms. Worms? Worms are good. Worms are good. They'll bite for worm worms. Say, listen. Uh, you know, I got an idea. What we ought to do is we ought to change lines. This is better now. I, I know you cannot fail now because that's my magic strength. Sorry, man, honestly, it's not a trick. I didn't trick you, it's just they, they, they it was unfair anyway because uh, I had the worm, you know. Oh, I took I advantage. One. Much. 